Hey, Johnny, you and I are back, huh? Another show? And you brought a radio guy? You brought Frasier? I'm uh, listening. Frasier? Who's Frasier? Frasier? Is that no, the I've, proper I've... way to say it? Frasier? Oh, no, no, it was Fraser. Well, I thought that was a TV. Wasn't that a TV show back in the 80s, Fraser? Fraser? Right. I'm on radio. I see a guy named Frasier. I'm all excited. <laughs> Well, so you should be because I think we've got a we've got a, a, a man hiding under a, a many cloaks. You know, he, a phrase is obviously Scottish, which is fantastic. And Edwards, obviously, after you know the a uh, Welsh, you know, a Welshman. N- not we actually, Fraser. You said you don't do any mining, but you've you've got you've got your own cryptocurrency, you've got your own token. So maybe there was a bit of sort of mining on the side, and you hadn't even realised it. That's very, very true. I really hadn't considered it that, that way. Um, really wasn't a link I'd kind of, I'd made. I'd certainly made the rugby one, but the, the crypto one had completely escaped me. That's a good job. I've, I've kind of, I guess, uh, come onto the show just to kind of make that link and uh, add, it to, <laughs> add it to our team's puns that we can start rolling out. So it's not in your white paper. I hope that was pun as well. Oh, yeah, it always intended. Right. So... Uh, James, as you say, we're delighted this week. We're joined by Fraser Edwards, who's CEO and co-founder of a, of a company called Checked, C-H-E-Q-D. And, and Fraser, I, I'm, I'm fascinated. I'd love to know, I know you, I think you're ex-Accenture, is, is that correct? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, yeah. So we, we started Checked in, in April of last year. Um, but prior to that, I was working at Accenture for, I think it was five or six years. Um, long, long enough is probably the, the way I'd term it. And yeah, prior to this was was mostly working on self sovereign identity, which hopefully we'll get into, um, and some central bank digital currency stuff. And before that, a load of biometrics and AI and all the fun technology buzzwords that you hear about in the news. Brilliant. Okay, so I suppose the first thought I've got a what, what is self sovereign identity? You know what 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 what's all that about? I heard, I've heard of a sovereign jaguar, and I've heard of the obviously the queen. She's the sovereign, but um, what's what do you mean by self sovereign identity? Did you yeah, say jaguar different. again? Jaguar, yeah, jaguar, not shaguar, uh, James. I, I know you've got a BMW, but you know, mind the Indians own jaguar now, don't they? But I'm oh, sorry, I, I, I digress. I <laughs> and I am. Um, I think it's. I think there was there are more A's in jaguar. I think it's jag. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was the Clarkson <laughs> kind of drag the A out as long as. Okay. With Jaguar. Now, us three, we love Jags because they're so they're so roguish. You can take a girl out for dinner if you have a Jag, and then she will pay. You can go and stay with people for the weekend, help yourself to all their belongings, and no one will mind because you have a Jag. Yeah, don't, phrase, don't, don't worry about James. Please tell me what this <laughs> sort of identity because we'll never get there otherwise. We will end up talking about cars because that's. That's a topic which is very close to James and my heart, but we. We've I am en- I'm entirely on board with that. I'll do my best to cover SSI, but um, I'd be more than happy defaulting to the E-type and going through all the various jags of history. Um, but uh, SSI, um, SSI, it's an interesting term um, because it captures kind of everything and nothing about what it is. So <laughs> <laughs> it's probably probably best to describe it in in kind of in comparison to the way that the world works now and. One of our team, Alex, uh, has a great kind of analogy for for how people's personal data is used right now. Um, most people out there will kind of know that there's this concept of surveillance capitalism. If you're not paying for a service, you are the service, you are the product, that kind of stuff. Um, and how everyone's data is kind of collected, siloed, and then sold online. And then Alex's kind of analogy takes that even further and says, like, the world right now, um, it collects your data. And then whenever you want to go and use it, Um, You're going to have to ask the bouncer at the door for access to your own data. And then he asks you for a secret password, a code word, and you have to make sure you get the right one because otherwise you don't get to access your own data to go and use it elsewhere, however you want to. And really self-sovereign identity is is kind of the entire antithesis of that. So um, it's giving people back the data under their control, kind of giving people back their privacy ultimately because you you don't need as much of this data being tracked about you. And I guess to put it shortly, it, it means that you control the data you share, you decide what you receive, what you share, who from and who to. And really it's, it's about building, I guess, the internet and generally everything around people rather than corporations um, with the hope of, I guess, eliminating surveillance capitalism is one of the overall goals. But I think really it's just putting people back in, uh, giving people back control. Okay, so in the, in, the, in the good old days, if you wanted to open up a bank account or if you wanted to change your utility supplier, you actually had to wander along with a copy of your ID, your passport, your driving license, you know, maybe a copy of a utility bill. And 
maybe they'd take a photocopy of it. Normally they did. And, and that was kind of it. And that's where it stayed because it got popped away into a filing cabinet. But now we have a situation whereby it's not just your your ID, like your ID card or passport, but whatever you're doing um, seems to be captured. And if you've shared your information or your maybe your CV or maybe, you know, other personal information, you've got no idea has that company that you've given that information, what have they done with it? And then suddenly you get loads of people trying to market and sell you timeshares or double glazing or or a new BMW. And James, you fell for that advert, I know, but there you go. So is that what you mean? You, you've got more control over your information and your and who you are? Uh, absolutely. And more transparency on where it's going and why. I would assume that a lot, a lot of your listeners are aware that they have a credit score. I'd assume all of them are, hopefully. Um, but probably they, they don't necessarily understand the mechanics of how that's created. And really what's happening there is you've got a third party who is buying or receiving your data from companies that you've interacted with, creating a profile of you entirely without your permission, and then all of your credit history and the ability for you to get new credit cards, loans, move house, get a mortgage, um, is all predicated on this profile that someone's built up on you without your permission. And it's really kind of shifting away from that model where um, you're being surveilled, you've got data being captured about you. And actually, the, probably a more day-to-day one, I imagine like everyone uh, who's listening, I, I buy a lot of stuff online. Um, I use a lot of different websites. And there seems to be a pattern now where they're all making you create an account. So even if I'm buying some random widget from across the world that I know I'll never deal with ever again, I'm still creating an account with my kind of full name, like email address, postal address, potentially even phone number. And I'll never interact with that that kind of company ever again. So it's kind of really moving away from let's capture as much data, kind of data about people as possible to let's actually use what's needed and kind of allow them to hold that data themselves as well. Okay. But by doing this, are you disempowering then the, you know, the, 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 you know, the fangs, if you like, the Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, the, the Amazons, the, the, the companies that have, have monetized our data um, so effectively, but in many cases given us, as you say, free services, but we think it's free, but potentially we've paid a price for it then. Exactly. And and I think you're right. It is it is somewhat kind of taking back that control and taking and defanging the fangs, um, as, as we could probably put it. Um, but it's, yeah, I guess I guess kind of um, reducing their power. And I think that to your point, like when 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 we're get, getting these services, we like there are free services and some of them are absolutely incredible. But what's really interesting is they're typically paid for by someone, and whether that's yourself with your privacy or in the case of kind of um, what Apple is doing in the US now with driving licenses, actually all of that cost is being borne by the state. Um, so it's actually being paid for by by personal taxes. Um, so it's still kind of lining Apple's coffers. It's just doing it in a different way. One of the downsides of these experiences is even though they appear seamless, they're typically behind a username and password. And all of that kind of that infrastructure needing to have authentication or certainly so many usernames and passwords is down to companies collecting that data. Um, if there's a boss, if there's the ability to kind of prove who you are to a strong degree every time you interact with someone in a very seamless way, I think we'd all choose that if it was a case of um, we don't need to enter any passwords anymore. We don't need to kind of go through the rigmarole necessarily of biometrics every time. That uh, I think the, the big difference, uh, like myself and Anger, who've worked in SSI for, for a while, um, we've both had uh, SSI, Soft Sovereign ID demos on our phones, um, and they're a game changer. Um, as soon as you've had that kind of experience in your in your wallet and on your phone, you really can't go back to having to enter kind of 20 or passwords a day. It really becomes painful. So it's um, to your point about kind of great services, they, they definitely are. I think our argument would be you could make those services even better with self-sovereign identity. OK, so so I, I use I, I use a phone that does facial recognition. So instead of having to put passwords in or even a f- fingerprint or whatever, it, it, it recognizes my face. Um, unfortunately for the phone, but there you go. Uh, and getting into websites or signing into other, you know, it says use your, you know, use your sort of ID, um, whichever manufacturer phone it may well be. Is, is that a form of self-sovereign identity? Because providing it's my face next to the phone, then I start getting access to websites or my bank account or, you know, my trading account. Is, is, is that the sort of thing you mean? Or are you taking it one step further? 
Uh, it's probably one step further, um, although it's, it's, it's a pretty decent parallel because what's happening there is the passwords are being stored to your phone and what you're then doing is using the biometrics to kind of, what they do is they pull the right password from uh, whether it's like the inbuilt keychain on Apple or whether it's like LastPass, one password, that kind of thing, um, and then enters that to, to log you in. So from a, I guess, from a... An SSI perspective, kind of the passwords are being stored in an SSI perspective. They're on your device, they're under your control, they're not being kind of stored off to a third party. You kind of have control, edit, and access of them. Um, I think where SSI really shifted is it says rather than you having to use your password to go and access your data, like a credit file, you would actually hold that yourself. Um, it moves, it kind of moves it much more backwards towards um, the example you gave around walking into a branch and using your passport passport and in paper world you basically take your documents wherever you want you use them however you want and after that document's been issued no one can really trace where you're using that document the uk government whilst they've got kind of surveillance and, and all that kind of jazz if you go and use your passport to open up a bank account they have no reason to know about it and they probably won't on the other hand a lot of interactions um in the digital world really do follow you around obviously the famous ones are google and and facebook where if you happen to use facebook or if even if the the page has a facebook uh login button that can begin to track you as you move around the site um and it's so it's really moving to your point i guess originally like the passwords in that scenario really are kind of they're in a bit of an ssi paradigm um but really your data is still under lock and key and with someone else Okay, so in in your article, which you it, it was called Web three and digital identity, so we, we've we've kind of looked at the digital identity in terms of the sort of self sovereign and having your having your identity in a digital format, which you can then share online. Well, can you can you just walk us through how you would explain you know what's Web two, what's Web three? Um, I know James, we've talked about this before, but it's it's, it's always interesting to hear other people's perspective how they. How would you describe it for sort of perhaps the, for, you know, for someone that's not quite such to speak with these sort of terminologies? Oh, I've seen loads of good diagrams for this, but they really don't translate onto radio, do they? Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd say, I'd say probably the, one of the big differences between Web 2 and Web 3 is, is the ownership. And obviously SSI is, is a version where you own your data, but one of the, one of the kind of maxims of Web 3 is that, kind of those who are really contributing to the system in some format or to the value of, of a system in some format are the ones who are primarily reward, rewarded. Probably a great example would be YouTube and Twitter would be very much considered like Web2 companies as they currently stand. Um, Twitter is probably one of the rare companies that is making moves to potentially cannibalize itself into Web3. But they're very much like all the value that's created. Yes, some goes out to the creators, um, but there are very good reasons why uh, sites like Patreon and others have sprung up because the, the reality is those platforms are rewarding the owners so so google alphabet but they're really not rewarding the creators the people who actually make the the platform what it is the kind of web3 shift is that actually those people should be rewarded much more um, and they should have more ownership of kind of the underlying infrastructure um, they should have kind of control of where that's going and they should be rewarded for participation um, so really it's it's kind of a movement to to decentralization but then you've kind of got wrapped up in in this also kind of AR, VR and kind of the metaverse and gaming. So you've almost got this, these two movements. One is very much towards decentralization and more, I guess, diffuse ownership. And then the other one is very much more into kind of moving into digital realms, digital art, NFTs, like purely online content creation um, and very much shifting into AR and VR. So I probably describe like I'd lump those two as kind of Web three, um, but that would probably the, be the way that I'd mainly describe kind of that. I guess that split between Web two and Web three. Okay, and and the importance of having some understanding in, that there is a difference between Web two and Web three is that certainly with a self sovereign identity, it, it, it's um it's a bit like a ticket to ride. It gives you the ability to to be engaged much more with Web three type protocols, and you can be then part of that digital community and be rewarded 
for your engagement. Uh, I suppose that's one way of possibly looking at it. Yeah, that, yeah, I, th- I think that's a great way. And, and I think um, one of the examples I've seen is, and this very much comes from um, the kind of the kind of crypto world of there's a big movement of hold your own keys. And the logic there is that if you're using a centralized exchange and you don't own your own keys, then actually it's the exchange who owns those tokens, those digital assets and NFTs, whatever it is. So there's there's kind of inside crypto, there's already been that movement of if you don't have control over it, it's it's not really yours. I guess the, the same, obviously, there's legal kind of um, structures in place, but it would be a similar argument for, for bank accounts and what happened in Canada recently, where obviously <laughs> everyone, ha- um, they had their money in accounts. Yep. They were involved in protests for, for right or for wrong, and that some of them had their money for like, accounts frozen. The, the argument there is like, yes, you've you've got control, you've got access to that account, but actually there's nothing to stop anyone freezing it. And I think kind of the SSI movement is following that same logic, but for identity. Um, it's in one way, it's bringing it much closer to kind of, I guess, pre-web where you've got physical documents that you can use without being surveilled um, but at the same time moving it into a, a kind of digital format and massively extending it um, it's probably worth me just taking like a minute here to explain that whilst we keep on talking about like passports and driving licenses and like really high assurance stuff mm-hmm. um you can also like this data could be anything. It could be anything from an avatar in a game. It could be your experience or your reputation in that game. It could be a receipt for something that you bought that's just worth having a value of. And all of that kind of data should be should be with you under your control. Um, and that's yeah, that's probably the real shift is is that ownership. Right, right. So so basically, as you say, it's quite interesting. If you think it through, listening to you there, we, we're almost going back to where we started, in the sense that. I, you know, I mean, typically most people, you know, they don't leave their driving license, you know, lying around or their national identity card or, or their passport. Um, you know, they, they tend to keep that fairly close to them. You know, not normally it's locked up in your in your house somewhere, I suspect. Whereas we've gone to a situation now where we seem to just, you know, click accept all copies. Yep. Here's my name address. Here's my mother's maiden name and inside leg measurement. And, you know who knows what, and, and people have realised that perhaps some of that data has been possibly exploited, but certainly monetized, and they haven't had the benefit, um, albeit they've had perhaps free searches or free information or free accounts to upload pictures or what have you, but that's a different story. And what we're now going back to is, no, I want to take control back, and I want to share my information with the people that I want to share it with when I want to share it, and for how long. And that's kind of this sort of behind self-sovereign identity, and and that's linked into this the new development of this Web three. Is that is that a, a way to summarise it then? I completely agree, um, and I think the. Well, I mean, not many people normally do that, so that, that's <laughs> it, it must have been listening to you. <laughs> you made a yeah, friend. Obviously, a Scottish dulcet tone. I, I really understood it this time. <laughs> um, I I think the um, oh god, you've you've charmed me into into speechlessness. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe, say, maybe, maybe you're Welsh mining terms. Maybe you're going back and you sort of you've got a canoe <laughs> in, the, in the in your bedroom or whatever. Oh, just uh, well, I'm originally from the northeast, so maybe I'll just uh, just move in. Well, yeah, man. Kind of prop, yeah, proper Geordie. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, go down the whole Brian Johnson ACDC <laughs> kind of twang. But the oh, sorry, that was what I was going to say. It was around kind of. Um, I, I think it's more getting to a point where sorry, I guess where we hope it's going to get to a point is where you basically have the choice. Um, so there are going to be situations where centralized just works. I've been for a long time attempting to use DuckDuckGo and other search engines. And the reality is they are just not as good as Google. Um, I dislike that, but it's just reality. Yeah. Um, on the other side, there's definitely like the movement to have your own data and stop kind of, I, I am, there's a st- statistic somewhere that is the average person has about 200 um user accounts online accounts that they have um over a lifetime i reckon i've done that just this year um or certainly in the last 12 months um so i'm probably well over double that across a lifetime and i'd really like to stop because it's um one i'm kind of spreading data all over the place like you said but it's it's also just not a pleasant experience um and i've started kind of actively avoiding websites that are forcing me into creating accounts because 
yeah, it's just unnecessary. Um, so anyway, that was a long ramble to say there's probably, we definitely still need choice. Um, it's never going to be one or the other. Um, but I think it's very much getting back to having that choice rather than kind of being locked into sometimes quite nice walled gardens. James, what, any, what, what springs to mind as we've been rumbling on? Well, with the last statement he just made, every time my birthday comes around, I get these automated birthday wishes from websites that I... <laughs> I was on in like 1998, like the craziest car websites or something like happy 46th birthday, James. And I go, oh, my God, I was 22. They they really retain your data. Wow. That's okay. That's slightly terrifying. I've I've uh, thankfully not hit the age yet where I've got data that's been hanging around 20 years. But um, yeah, I think that shows exactly how long this stuff is hidden away. Wow. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, I sold that car in 01. Well, the trouble is, James, you're a bit, you know, you're a bit like the Queen. You, you have two birthdays, I suspect, don't you? So she gets two lots of male shots. Oh, could you imagine? And she's been around 100 years? <laughs> My space yeah, you know, is still emailing her. She has two birthdays, though, James. She has two birthdays. She has a normal birthday, like we were there, she's born. And then she has a sort of her royal birthday. So she, she, you know, she must get so many male shots from people trying to sell another corgi or pet food or, or you know, how, never, how to I've keep I've never heard of that. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, she has two, two birthdays. Uh, two birthdays. Well, I thought a man, a man of your general caliber would have at least two birthdays, James. Perhaps you need to have a word with the missus and get that sorted out. She can give you two for two for one at, at Christmas or something. A two for that sounds dirty. Two for <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> okay. Well, look, Fraser. Um, really, really interesting. You, you really have, I think, really enunciated and explained what self-sovereign identity is all about. Although we've tried our best to sort of throw you off track. So thank you very, very much for being patient and humorous. But um, no, I think it's really, you know, joking apart, what, what, what it seems to me, that what, what you're able to do here is your company checked is very much trying to give people the choice. You know, some people may be very happy carrying on with the current status quo, whereas other people who are saying, no, 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 I, I do want to take control back of my information, my data. I do want to be able to engage in, uh, in as we're seeing, you know, you touched on the metaverse there and we mentioned things like NFTs. And, and having self-sovereign identity enables you to perhaps interact and deal um, in a more controlled aspect. So it's something which is it's just got to grow and grow. But uh, um, no, it's really good. And I, I know the business isn't that old. Um, you know, we've done a few bits and pieces with you. Regular um, readers of Digital Bytes will, will, will know that you've run a series of articles because it's something we, we at Digital Bytes think it's really important, the, st- the stuff you're doing. So we're going to watch with interest how you get on. And um, I know you've got a fundraiser coming up later this year, so hopefully we'll hear a bit more information about that but um if people want to get hold of you fraser what's the best way sort of linkedin or just presumably your website was it checked c-h-e-q-d it is dot io um or just uh, find me on twitter um so i'm fraser underscore again um given that a perfect example of accounts i forgot my last part last password and now i'm unable to set control of that account anymore it's disappeared off into the ether um so fraser underscore again um or kind of find our uh, our website like you're saying a c-h-e-q-d because we couldn't find checked with the normal spelling that was available on the domain um and just I drop us a note dyslexic so like me. <laughs> I keep looking at the well, that, you know where's the you gone or that would have been a much better um well exactly or yeah that would have been a much better excuse no um, as a <laughs> as it was it was just uh what was the shortest domain that we could get that was available and st- still sounded like a real world real word <laughs> real word. oh brilliant well th- well 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 congratulations it's certainly memorable all right well james thanks very much again for getting things sorted out and organized this week and we'll be back on the the airwaves next week with a new edition of digital bite show and and a new guest so until then thank you listeners for tuning in to cyber.fm and if you would like a copy of this week's digital bites and um, a, a copy of uh, fraser edwards from uh, checked.io if you'd like a copy of the article then please contact either uh, james at cyber.fm or myself johnny fry both of us are on linkedin and we'll be back on the airwaves this time next week all the best hey when we bring fraser back on in the future it's i want him to fraser. study that you sound like that you got song it's fraser Poor I'm, man. Hey, listen, oh, I the they put Zeds in there. <laughs> I'm over here in New York. Oh, all right, it's so Fraser. Fraser. I'll, I'll forgive you, James. And yeah, I've def- I've definitely had. No- I'm trying to think of the strangest pronunciation I've had so far. 
I think probably Fraser is probably one of the worst ones. I'm sure I've had worse though. I just can't remember them. Or Fraser, <laughs> Star Trekkies. Freezer, yeah, that was definitely. Freezer. Uh, I mean, that, Freezer. that's when that's when you're getting back to kind of um, teenage years and and school children. But yeah, definitely Freezer, Fraser. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's been more. They'll come back to me later on when I'm kind of in the shower. Classic case. We're gonna trigger his classic childhood thing. bullies only on Cyber.fm. <laughs> <laughs> bringing the bully back to life but there you go. all right guys okay guys thanks very much oh, it's been a pleasure thank you hey baby i hear the blues are calling tossed salads and scrambled eggs quite stylish and maybe i seem a bit confused yeah maybe but i got you pegged <laughs> but i don't know what to do with those tossed salads and scrambled eggs Calling again. Scrambled eggs all over my face. What is a boy to do? Frazier has left the building.